Amen. Matthew chapter number 11, verse number 1 says, And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God. And uh, we pray that, amen, you would move into the service one more time and you would anoint these lips of clay to preach your word. Your word is already anointed, so we need this old man to be anointed this very hour, amen, to preach your word. And I pray, God, that you would usher angels into this service, amen, to minister to the needs of every individual that's under the sound of my voice this morning, God. I pray for the fivefold ministry to take place into this church to release your healings and your giftings into this service, Lord. We love you and we praise you for it in your precious, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated this morning in Jesus' name. Now, deep in the Colorado desert, there was a nine-year-old girl by the name of Mandy who walked out of her trailer while her parents were sleeping. And she quietly slipped on her shoes and went to into the desert. And um, when Mandy's parents woke up and noticed she was missing, uh, no doubt they went into a state of mind of panic mode. And immediately they ran into the phones and called the park rangers. And the park rangers picked up their phones and called a woman by the name of Hannah Yala. Hannah was and is an expert tracker who works for the Joshua Tree Search Rescue Team. Uh, Hannah arrived on the scene where she immediately tried to secure the uh, real and salvage any footprints that might be left before uh, this child was disappeared. And it took Hannah less than an hour to find footprints and uh, look into uh, Mandy's trail and begin tracking the child. Hannah followed Mandy's footprints one by one, and every parent, every grandparent uh, would only, could only know uh, that type of, of uh, such pain. And, 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 and uh, you, I, you just, as a parent, I can't even comprehend of a child missing, my own baby missing. Uh, the, there's no explanation of how you could even feel not knowing where your baby's at. And I, so I can imagine what these parents were going through uh, when they fi- woke up to only find their child missing. And, uh, but she tracked, this tracker came in, and she tracked their footprints one by one, step by step. And Hannah knew time was against her. Uh, not only was she trying to catch up uh, to Mandy, but it was getting late because uh, during the days, even in Colorado when we lived in uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico, we were right beside there, and we were elevated a little bit higher. And so the higher you are, amen, uh, the, the, the hotter it gets with uh, the dry heat. And, um, and so time was against her when she was looking for her. And she knew that when, if the sun uh, came up, uh, there, that, that, would be, uh, that would be very bad. And in the cold at nighttime uh, in the desert, even uh, living in that area, uh, there's not many bums that live in the streets. There's not very uh, homeless people that live in the, the sewers or anything like that because uh, it gets so cold at night in the desert area, even Colorado and, and that whole area, that hypothermia can take place. And so uh, they were scared about all these. They were thinking about these. And, and only a parent could think of those things, that my baby's going to die. Something's going to happen. And as hours went by, hundreds of people from the community began flooding the desert. Every one of them, hundreds of them followed Hannah as Hannah followed the footprints, and they were right behind her. Hannah is one of the best trackers in her fields, especially when it comes to finding lost children. And after several hours of tracking Mandy all over the desert, she finally found her. Thank God. And just as as had many other children before her, Mandy was by a small riverbank lost as any other nine-year-old could be. And uh, there's a story behind Hannah. Uh, The story is, although Hannah is an expert at tracking lost children uh, and in an expended period of time in her life, 
uh, where her own children been abducted, and no matter how hard she tried to find them, she couldn't find her kids anywhere. And when she was younger, she married a man who was abusive. And this man abused her children. He abused uh, uh, her family. And, um, and uh, he, he basically uh, kidnapped her kids and eluded the police and disappeared for several years without knowing where her children was. And when she was younger, she married um, this man that abused her children and eventually uh, did all these things. In fact, it was uh, Hannah's uh, uh, abducted children that she eventually got back and uh, that, that gave her passion to, to save lost children. When, when her own kids were missing, she got into the field of tracking lost kids and lost children because uh, this gave her a passion to do something that happened to her. Hannah said during the years of her children's disappearance, there had been many occasions where she felt like she was losing her mind. She felt like she was going to give up and this wasn't going to happen and, and I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And in order to keep herself stable and to fight off the desire to quit, she volunteered at the Colorado Park Rangers office, helping them look for lost children. Very quickly, the Rangers noticed everything that Hannah did, that she did it with a peculiar passion. When she looked and searched for lost children, because to Hannah, every lost child was her own child. Every kid that was lost in the nation was her own kid. And only a mother, only a father, only a parent could know that. She said, the reason why I track lost children is because tracking gives me hope. It kept me from losing my mind, she said. That the process of impossible can become possible. It was something my broken heart had to feel. It was something that the, the, the tears stained in my eyes can see. Hannah learned that while you're waiting on a miracle, the best thing for your eyes to see is the miracle take place in the life of someone else's life. Not only is it important for us to see a miracle happen in someone else's life, it's important that we become a part of the process of that possibility to take place. One writer said, we are not denying that our pain exists, but we are denying the pain that the power over our existence. No matter how much little or much more we do and labor in the kingdom of God to see people saved, but, but the, the, the people near us and that, that are dearest to us, those are the people that are lost too. The people that we love. Amen. I want to preach to all the pain that comes with seeing lives we work with come together. Amen. The lives of the people that, that mean the world to us fall apart. Amen. I'm talking to those today that, that help with our church financially. Amen. That help with our church that will pick up trash outside. Somebody that will uh, be a part of the church when, when food comes or potlucks and all these things take place. Amen. Sunday school teaching and, and bring meals and, and and, and prepare songs for churches despite your effort. Amen. Your loved ones are still remained lost. Week in and week out, you help build a church that people you love won't step foot inside the house of God. So here's something I felt to tell us today. Don't leave and don't quit. Keep believing and keep praying. Amen. Don't get bitter. Amen. And most of all, don't ever stop believing that God can bring in your baby inside the house of God. Amen. Most of all, don't ever stop believing. Amen. That God cannot save the individual in your family that you had said one time or another. My God, nobody could ever move this individual. Yes, he can. God can make a depression come out of the way. He can take, he can take anxiety right out of the picture God can take somebody that is so bitter in their heart amen by the next year when you see them amen you will only think my God only Jesus could have done that only God can do something like that praise God hallelujah and it's true you know that reminds me of we were talking about sister Paige I'm, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I, well, I love Paige. I do. I really do. She, she goes out of her way for a lot of things. If I talk about jambalaya, she's got to hear the next day. 
I don't even got to ask for it. Before I even say liar, it's already there. If you mention something in the church, she's one of the first people to come out. Praise God. Now, she may not run the aisles, and she may not lift her hands like the way you do, and she may not come to the altar all the time like some of you do. But I'll tell you what, she does lift a finger in the house of God behind closed doors. And God sees every work in her life. Well, one thing that sparked me was we, we did go to this boat she had her husband built, a homemade boat. Man, I'm telling you, y'all got to, y'all, uh, if you ever get a chance. But we was out there, and we had a beautiful time. It was beautiful. The, the river, I had my nephew there, and my kids, my family, her family. She had her son there, and um, Paul, and all everybody, and, and it was just a beautiful time. And, uh, and, 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 I, and, and what, what's, what, what hit me yesterday was my wife came, and I hope, I hope you don't mind I, I, I'm saying this, and, but my wife came, and she said, you know, my, she said, when y'all were at the boat, and we were there. I, I, she may have been edgy, you know, uh, with her pastor there and maybe people around who cuss and all this stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm from the world, so I know all about that. I'm, it ain't nothing new to me. But, and I don't condemn people. And, uh, but she told my wife, Sister Lankford, yesterday, she said, you know, my son cusses a lot. And he, he says all the, drops the F-bomb one after another. And this and that. But, and, and she said, and, and the whole time, you know, y- y'all were there, he didn't even say one cuss word. Didn't say anything of, of that, that nature and around y'all. And, 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 and he, he would drop a hat. He would, just, he would just cuss. It don't matter who's around. Governor Bell Edwards could be there. He'll still cuss. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and she told me that. And she said her husband said the word Lord. I thank the, thank the Lord for something and a beautiful day or something occurred. She said, that's the first time I heard Paul ever talk about the Lord. Well, I, I, I said that to say this. Uh, um, you know, I, I believe those type of things are happening, not because Brother Lankford was there, but because Sister Paige comes to the house of God. And God sees every move that she does and everything that she does for God. And, uh, you know, she came out and she, she picked up the, four, the, the, the golf cart that she loaned us for uh, 10 years or what it felt like last month. And, and we, we kept it for the longest time and she kept it and she brought it and, and it fell off the back of the trailer and she had to back up, call Paul, come pick it up. And they came, picked it up and, and I, we felt bad and we said, oh, my Lord, they're never going to loan it to us again. And, and she, she laughed about it. She says, no, I, I love doing those things. I, 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 she said, in fact, she made a mention. She said, I'd drive to California if I had to, to do this stuff for my pastor and my pastor's wife. And uh, I say that because uh, uh, all, all, uh, all she does inside the house of God is a reflection of what's going to happen on the outside of God, outside of the house of God. Every move that she makes, every, God is looking at every, every time, Sister Paige, when you come to the house of God, when you're working in here, God's working out there for you. When you come to the house of God, God's going out there for you. He's touching people's lives regardless of what you're doing inside the house of God. He's still taking care of your needs. Praise God. Amen. While you're coming to church, amen, he's going to your lost loved ones. Oh, yeah, while you're here. He's going to your lost loved ones. Amen. He's working on your lost children. Amen. Sister Diane, he's working on Brother Anthony. He's working on Sister Tori. He's working on your kids. He's working on your grandkids. Brother Lamorne, all the work that you put in the labor for the kingdom of God is not unseen and it's not going to be overlooked. God is looking at it and he's going to bless it and he's putting you with the right people at the right time for those things to take place and God is mending everything together. Why? Because when you come to the house of God, God is going back behind you and doing work behind your back and he's touching people in your lives that you would never think that would ever step foot in the house of God hallelujah Hallelujah. praise God I've been you know I've been believing revivals just taking place taking place and 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 an old lady 
nailed my hide at camp meeting that I'd never met before, never laid eyes on her. When I walked in, I was walking in, I seen a friend of mine, he, he pastors in another city, I gave him a hug, and uh, he, he said, Brother Lankford, it's so good to see you. And he I was speaking loud because it was loud around us. There's thousands of people. He said, Brother Lankford, it's so good to see you. And, and an old lady grabbed my arm on the side, and she said, did, did, is your, your name Brother Lankford? And, and I said, yes, man, what a K. I always say K because there's a lot of G's. And, and I said, yes, Lankford, what a K. She said, do you pastor in Simsport? And I said, yes, ma'am, I do. She said, oh, I've got a family a backslidden family that needs to go to your church and they live right around the corner from your church and I just talked to them the other day and we just sat down and we were all talking about the Holy Ghost and, and I said well I don't know the church I don't know if there is a church in your city or wherever but I know there's my church and they said well that's too far to go and she said when I heard your name she said there was a lady that, that, that one of the ladies said they passed by and they saw the sign and they said well there's a Pastor Lankford there and there's a Pentecostal church we don't know if they're of uh, Trinity Pentecost or what Pentecost but there's a Pentecostal church and it says Lankford and she said when I heard your name she said it's got to be you and when you're in this camp meeting I, she said I knew it was a one God apostolic pastor and she said I'm going to call them up and let them know there is a one God apostolic pastor in your city will you give me your number and I gave her a number I'm telling you revival is already here all you got to do is say yes I I'm with you, I'm behind you, God, and I want it. Hallelujah, Jesus. We need to ask God to help us to go from seeing what we know to know what we're seeing. Hallelujah, because there's a big difference between seeing what's what, what, what you know and knowing what you're seeing. When you see what you know, it's basically just seeing just business as usual it's you know it's all that stuff, great stuff it's we see it all the time praise God someone gets the Holy Ghost that's that's okay that's just someone getting the Holy Ghost not really much of a big deal but I tell you what when your lost babies walk inside the house of God and they come walking through the back of that door that's that's kind of a big deal to you hallelujah Amen. When your kid comes up to the altar and they raise their hands and they never got the Holy Ghost and God gives them the baptism of the Holy Ghost. My God, I'm telling you, there's something that will change in you. The way, the aspect, the way you look at life. Amen. The way you worship God. I'm telling you, if you were dead before the service and you saw the loved one that you wanted to be saved, get the Holy Ghost right here in the house of God. Amen. It wouldn't be a coincidence that you ran the aisles. It wouldn't be a coincidence that you jumped to your feet. Amen. So you might as well praise God like they're already getting it right now and say, you know what, God? I'm going to thank you for the unbelieving, for the unseeing mercies and grace. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. It does something to you. When Sister Lankford and I, we were in a board meeting in Amarillo, Texas. We were sitting there. We were with the district, the Texaco district. And uh, when we was in there, both of our phones went off. We had just sent our kids off to camp, kids camp. And it was a video that was sent to my wife and I. We both pushed play on the video. And it was, it was a video of soaring and honor in London, speaking in tongues for the very first time. <laughs> that did something to me that day. That did something to me. It does something to you when your kids get the Holy Ghost. When your kids speaking in tongues for the very first time. It'll change your life. It'll change the way you talk and the way you live for God. It'll, it'll change the way you preach. It'll change the way you want to worship God. When you come inside the house of God, oh, you ain't going to give them a golf clap anymore. You're going to praise them like you've never praised them before. Amen. When you run the aisles, you're going to run like you've never run before. Why? Because something does something to you. God does something to you.
I wish we would praise him like he's already filled our babies with the Holy Ghost. I wish we would praise him like he healed our grandmother already. I wish we would run the aisles as if he's already saved our loved ones. I wish we would lift up our hands as if he already saved our kids. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. The devil doesn't want you to see things in the particular light. Amen. He wants to mess up your perception. Amen. This is what he did to Adam and Eve. Amen. In the Garden of Eve, the Bible says that their eyes were open after they had sinned. Amen. Their eyes weren't even closed to begin with. What the scripture is implying is that Satan twisted their perception. He messed them up. He wants us to see people getting saved and think, well, that's just a Pentecostal church. That's just what happens around here every week. That's actually God trying to show you something much bigger than what's happening right before your eyes. If this alcoholic can get the Holy Ghost, your alcoholic can get the Holy Ghost. If this bitter individual can get the Holy Ghost, your bitter individual can get the Holy Ghost. If this individual who's walking with cancer, God can save him and heal him. God can heal your cancer. Some of y'all. Oh, my, my, my. The only thing I know I, I got helping me right now is the angels of the Lord because I can feel them in this place right now. I can feel, I know what God has put in my heart this morning to tell the church. I'm telling you, there's a better perception that we have got to get. Amen. I, it's not a coincidence that Brother Alvarado spoke what he spoke. It's basically the same notes God has entuned us to, amen, for this very hour. What are you saying? God is saying, amen, the way you conduct yourself today, amen, he's going to bless you tomorrow for it. Amen. What you're doing inside the house of God right now, he's going he's gonna to give you tenfold. He's going to give you tenfold. Amen. What's that mean? That means if you're walking with empty pockets, God's going to fill those pockets. If you're walking, amen, with an empty vessel, God's going to fill that void. God's going to do something for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. If this backslider can pray through, God can pray through your backslider. Hallelujah. This is why I keep coming to church. I want to be a part of the process. I want to be a part of this process to see the impossible become possible. Hello? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. This is why you come to church. Sister Diane, you, you got to keep coming to church. You know why? Because you got to keep believing. People, are, people are, are behind you. People are behind you because you still got people that need you to keep believing what you're believing right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every time I go to camps, uh, conferences, or every time I come in the office, just like this morning, I open up the Word of God. I got my notes ready for church. I started writing everything down. And this little voice whispered in my ear and said, you're doing all of this, but yet your mother is not saved. And your dad's not saved. And now he's got prostate cancer and your sister is LGBTQ, backslidden, used to have the Holy Ghost. They're not even saved. And why, why? And you're going to write these notes? And you're going to open up your Bible? Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be studying for a message right now, Brother Lankford, but look at your mom and your dad and your sister and your family. They're all lost. You know why I keep preaching? You know why I keep coming to church? You know why I don't let the devil move me? <clears throat> because I see people just like my mom getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because I see people just like my sister getting delivered and getting saved. I see people just like my family getting into the altar 
and praying through the Holy Ghost. It inspires me to see you families with your babies and your kids and you're bringing them to church. And, and I, 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 there, there's times I wish I, 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 I most of the times, all the time, I, I think I, that, that, that's what I desire in my heart. That's what I want. That's what I need. That's, that, that's what I want my family to come back. I, I, one time I want my, half my family to God. And, and I, but you know what? I've got to keep doing what I'm doing. Amen. If God's going to do something, it's going to come out of my works. Uh, it's going to come out because I kept believing that God can save my life. God can save my family. God can do. I see people just like my dad get the Holy Ghost uh, when I pray for them and somebody gets starts to speaking in tongues. Uh, I begin to think that's going to be my mother someday. That's going to be my daddy someday. That's going to be my family someday. When somebody gets healed of cancer, I think that's what's going to happen to my daddy. They sat because the Bible says, they that sow in tears. So doubtless. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. <coughs> you know, it wasn't a coincidence. That Sister Marlene, that, that situation, y'all heard that what happened. That wasn't a coincidence. That was the Holy Ghost. I don't believe that would ever happen if Marlene ever threw a fit and said, I ain't going back to that church no more. If she let one thing trip her up. But you know what she did? She kept coming to the house of God. She kept singing for the house of the God. She kept singing for the Lord. She kept, she kept paying her tithes. She kept, she kept worshiping God. She kept believing. Because she said, one day God's going God's to rescue my family. God's going to rescue my family. And you know what God did? It wasn't a coincidence that he orchestrated an attorney from that same city that her son is laying in, in, in a cell somewhere right beside her. And I'll tell you, it's not a coincidence because I think I even told her there's several months ago that God gave me a vision. And, and, and I, I, I think I told her, and I didn't much, probably didn't tell her everything, but God, God showed me something when she was right standing right here. I seen Brad, I seen Brad in a vision and I seen him in a room, in a dark room and in that room Jesus Christ had walked inside that room and it became lit up light you can see every crack in the wall and I told her that that told me that God was going to do something in his life God was going to do something for him and she's held on ever since and has not doubted God one bit yes maybe one month went by maybe two months went by but she never felt off of that wagon of unbelief You know, there's an old saying, someone, you know, someone told me one time, they said, Brother Lankford, if you go after the ones that everybody wants, God's going to give you the, uh, or uh, no, if you go after it, he said, if you go after the ones that nobody wants, he's going to give you the ones that everybody wants. And when I heard that, Brad was one of the ones I, th I thought about. Because I begin to think, if God, if we go after the ones that nobody wants, I want God to turn those people into the ones that everybody wants. What does that mean? That when an alcoholic comes to the church, rest assured he's going to be a preacher. That when a backslider comes to the house of God, he's going to be something for God. That somebody with an IQ below a two walks in the house of God, he's going to be one of the smartest people that you'll ever lay eyes on. What does that mean? That means God is going to do something to the people that come in this church. Oh, you ain't even hearing me. I, I don't even know. Where, I don't know where my help's at, but I'm telling you right now, God, this is the group right here of revival. This is the revival group. This is the changing group. God's not going to go off to Beverly Hills and send us some people that we don't even know. No, God's going to send us some people from Oak Street, from another street, from a different area that was a crackhead somewhere, and now they're preaching the gospel, and they're doing something you would never thought they would be doing. Come on, somebody lift up your hands. You better believe it. I don't know if you believe it, but I, this is what I'm believing. That's the kind of revival that God's going to give this church. That's the kind of harvest that's going to take place in Simsport. 
And if you think you're too good for those kind of people, then maybe this church ain't for what you're looking for. But God is fixing to do that in this city. Come on, somebody lift up their hands right now. I want, I want y'all to believe with me this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want Sister Lankford, I want you to come up here. I want you to I want you to testify real quick what 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 happened yesterday with you. Um I know he's gonna have me do this, but I, I went into I was at a gathering yesterday and there was um there, there was no talk. There was talk about count, but there was no talk about like church or anything like that. Not really, just like little tidbits here and there. Um, I realized everybody in the room knew who I was, but that was about it. And someone got ready to go, and they walked down the steps. And I followed them outside because I was checking on my kids. And this lady turned around and looked at me, and she said, you was talking about camp, but was that Tioga? And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, I used to go to Tioga. I spent a lot of days on Tioga campground. And I said, you did? And she said, yes. And she said, um, I used to go to POA. I said, okay. She said, I'm going to come to your church. I said, well, come go be with us. And she turned around and we went inside. In fact, and I'll tell, I was at Sister Bridget's house. She said, I'm going to tell Bridget right now that I'm going to come to church. So she walked back in the house. And when she walked into the house, she told Bridget, she said, hey, Mama Bridget, I'm going to go to church with you. And Bridget looked at her and Bridget's face, her whole face changed. She said, will you? And Brother Max's niece was standing there. Brittany and Brittany said, I'll go if you'll go. I'll go too. The girl looked at me and she said, I have four kids and my husband and I'm going to come to church. Well, they said, start singing. Y'all, she sang with the voice of an angel. She started singing, but she, it wasn't the voice of an angel that it was just great, but it was that God moved. There was already an anointing in flow, an anointing on this lady because God knows what is in plan. He has it orchestrated already. She started singing right there. And I could just feel it. I was like, Lord, you've told us what's to come. And I see the steps that are happening. I know what you're doing. I see the plans in place. She got through singing and she looked at me. She said, my daddy was a preacher. And it's been time for me to go to church. And I'm coming to church. She's not here today, but that don't shake my faith at all. I already know what's happening. I know what we're going to see. God's building something in some sport that we can never imagine is going to happen. Oh God. Hallelujah. Why don't we all stand to our feet right now? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sister, Sister Valdez, won't you come up? Amen. Hallelujah. Every single one of us, I want you to lift up your hands right now. I want you to lift up your voices. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the kind of revival that God's going to do something. You see, every city is different the way God orchestrates in different cities. He does it differently. Why is that? Because there's a different characteristic of body in different cities. And in this city in Simsport, there's a plan and there's a purpose and a process that God is working and we are the voice of God. It's not just me, but it's you. We're all the voice of God in this church. And it's going to take us, amen, to keep coming to church, to keep being a witness. Amen. Now, I understand when you call in when you got COVID-19, that's, that's, that's you can't really call out of that one. But I'm telling you, your faithfulness God sees every single one of your faithfulness. And there's a reason why God has been bringing backsliders and people back in increments in our services. Because of the faithfulness that, that, that has bestowed upon you. And God is blessing them. And he is using you today. Well, God, I, I don't know if I can do much. I, I, 
all I can do is just a, just come to church and, and do what, what, what's necessary to be saved. And God says, that's exactly what I want you to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. In fact, I think it would be, I think it, it would be appropriate if we made reservations today for our lost loved ones. If we came to the front and we made reservations at an old-fashioned altar and say, God, I reserve my child to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. My wife and I, we were, we were tabernacle hosts for, for the camp meeting this year. And, and, and our job was, was to seat the reserved people with the people that had names and they had reservations. And if you didn't have reservations, oh, you got, Sister Langford got, she got the bad end of that deal. She was working the side where the mean people were. And she had to tell them, this, this, I'm sorry, sir, this is reserved for so-and-so on the list. And this is reserved. There's some seats over here. But this one is specially reserved by the district. I want you to make that reservation for your loved ones today. And say this right here. Sister Betty right here. This, this is reserved for my grandbabies. This is reserved for my child. For my son, this is I'm making reservations. Don't don't cross over here because this is reservations for my baby. I want you to come and make a reservation today and say, God, I'm I'm gonna make reservations today for my child. Reservations that your spirit will move on them. God, that I won't make reservations that 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 that, that they would receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Don't be afraid of it. Just obey the Holy Ghost right now. Obey what you're feeling right now. I'll make reservations for my son. That's it, Brother Clyde. That's it, Brother Clyde. Make reservations. That's it, your boy. You're making reservations for him right now. 